This objective is labeled as separable differential equations, but these are actually much simpler than a typical separable differential equations. All we really have to do in these is something called the antiderivative or the integral. And if that's new for you, let me take a minute to explain it. When it says find the general solution, and then we're given dy dt equals 6t to the 2 fifths, this is the derivative already. This is the derivative of some other function of y. So the question is, what is y? So what was y before we took the derivative? And basically what we're going to do is undo the power rule. You know, the power rule, uh, it, it, when you're doing the power rule, you take the power and multiply it out front, so it becomes a constant out front, and then you reduce the power by 1. To take the antiderivative, to kind of go backwards to the function, what we're going to do is we're going to increase that power by 1, and then we're going to multiply out front by the reciprocal of that power. Let me show you how it works in this case. So we have dy by dt equals 6t to the 2 fifths. So the first step is to increase that power by 1. So I'm going to add 5 fifths to that power. So that becomes 6t to the 7 fifths. And then I multiply the constant out front by the reciprocal here. So 5 sevenths. And then we can simplify this a little bit if we want to, but what I'd like to do first is make sure, so I'm, I'm saying this is what y is now, but I'd like to, to double check by taking the derivative of this. Let's go backwards and make sure if we take the derivative of this, we really get this up here. So if you were going to take the derivative using the power rule here, you would multiply by the, the power here, out here as a constant, 7 fifths and 5 sevenths, they'd cancel out, they'd disappear. Then you'd reduce this power by 1, and you'd end up with 6t to the 2 fifths. So this is indeed the function uh, whose derivative is this up here. So why don't we go ahead and simplify this. Uh, we'll call this uh, 30 sevenths t to the 7 fifths. There's one little trick though, and that is that this is not the only function that could have this as a derivative. What if we had 30 sevenths t to the 7 fifths plus 1. Well, when you take the derivative, the 1 would just disappear and you'd end up with this, or plus 2, or plus a million. Any constant out here would give you the same derivative here. So when we take an antiderivative, or it's also called an integral, when we do that, we add on a big C to denote that this could be any constant there. And that would be the answer. All right, let's um, look at one more. This one says uh, solve the differential equation, but they're asking us to do the same thing, basically. We have dy by dx. We want to find out what y is. And uh, we've got negative 6 over x to the fourth plus 5x to the fourth. And there's this condition x is greater than 0. We'd be in trouble if x was 0. The function would be undefined there, so that's handy, I guess. But we're really going to apply the same uh, procedure we did on the first one. So actually, let me rewrite this first, dy by dx in uh, a way that will make it easier to apply this, this sort of reverse power rule that we're using. I'm going to call this negative 6 over x to the fourth, negative 6 times x to the negative fourth, and then we have our plus 5x to the fourth. Okay, so there's our function. Uh, the polynomial will, will take each piece, each term, and apply this reverse power rule to it. Remember what we do is we raise the power by 1, and then we multiply by the reciprocal out front. So this first term, so we're getting y here, I raise negative 4 by 1, I get negative 3. So we're going to get x to the negative 3. The reciprocal of negative 3, and I've got my negative 6 out here, is a negative 1 third. All right, I ran out of room there. But that's negative 1 third in there. And then we'll do the same thing here. x to the fourth, we raise the power by 1, that's x to the fifth. Multiply by the reciprocal, that's 1 fifth. And now we can do a little simplifying. Negative 1 third times a negative 6 is going to be a positive 2. And then we have x to the negative 3. And the 1 fifth and the 5 just cancel, so we get plus x to the fifth. And then since we were given um, in this rational notation in the first place, we might as well put it back. So y equals 2 over x to the third plus x to the fifth. And then we have to remember we need the plus big C here to denote that it, this could be any number of functions, 
depending on what constant you add to it, that would have this as a derivative. So that's a little bit of work with taking antiderivatives. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.